Every year around graduation, peonies spring into bloom across America. Well, depending where you're from, the flower is pronounced different ways. Well, I grew up in Pennsylvania, so they're peonies. Linda grew up in California, so they're peonies. And Southern folks call them pineys. Well, as varied as their pronunciation, so are the techniques to make them. Well, this quilt was made in Lancaster, Wisconsin around the 1860s. Now, Lancaster is a German community, and red and green quilts were quite popular. The quilt maker cut three red arrows and one green arrow for the leaves, and then hand applique them down. Now, there's a four-letter H word, hand. Well, the stems and leaves are also hand applique. I found this peony quilt in Berlin, Ohio, which is Amish country. Ooh, it's a treasure. Well, this quilt maker cut four red diamonds for the flower and one green triangle for the base. The stem and leaves are also hand appliqued. Well, the quilting is a hex sign, and that's very typical of paintings on Amish barns. This is a basket of peonies. The quilt maker said, Forget that curved stem handwork. I'm going for straight stems and machine finishing. Well, that's easy. I'd like to brighten your day and show you an easy way to make a peony. Join me. I have always wanted to make a peony wall hanging and I finally did it. Oh, I love it in the reds and the greens. Well, the block is a 12 inch finish size block, same size as sampler one. I made four blocks and then set them together with the solid square in the middle, side and corner triangles. And that crowning touch is that vine border with little buds on it. It's just so cute. Well, I sent it away to my cousin, Carol Ann, and she did an outstanding job. I just love all those little swirls and curves. The original antique peony that I copied used diamonds in the piece, and I said, no diamonds. So I used flying geese patches. Now there are two sets of red, all red patches, and then two sets of red and green patches. The very center is nothing more than log cabin. Then I did some bias stems, easy to do, and applique leaves on there. It's just great. Well, Amber Varnes made sampler too, and she's only 16. She said, L, no bias stems. So she put four peonies together and created a new look in her block. Well, I already showed you the flying geese technique in Road to California. So I'm just gonna move right through this flying geese very quickly. And to honor the peony, I'm dressing in a little handkerchief apron. It's made of three handkerchiefs, two on the side, and then look at the ruffle down in the bottom. It's just so cute. Well, to do flying geese, we start right here. These are six inch squares. You need to have three red and only one green. Put them right side up, cut your background squares at four and a half inches and place those right sides together and center. That's the tricky part, center them. And then the next step is to draw a diagonal line going through all four corners and then you just sew that quarter inch seam down along there, pretty easy. Next step is to just take your ruler and your cutter and cut right on the diagonal. And then you have two very strange pieces. Well, I did it with the green piece already. I've got my three reds all sewn, my one green cut in half. Now you take and you drop it on your pressing mat with the large triangle on the top. Now, it doesn't matter what color it is. You always want to press towards the dark. Well, not in flying geese. You press towards this large triangle on the top. Okay, always turn so the large triangle is um, with the seam away from you. Set that seam open and press. Now we're going to put these back together in two different color combinations. I'm going to do one set that has a green in it 
and a red. We've kind of got the flowers and the leaves. You place them right sides together, background to green, background to red. You don't match those seams in the middle. This is great, but look, you line up the outside edges and when you see these little tails hanging out, you know you have a flying geese patch going. And then, then the second set that you need to make is all red. You need to have two all red sets and two red and green sets. Going good. Now take your ruler and draw a diagonal line corner to corner. Six by 12 is great for this size. And if you've got some pins handy, just stick a pin in there. I'll just catch up with that patch in a minute. But use that same quarter of an inch seam. Just drop your foot. Now I do have a quarter inch foot. And I'm dropping that bar on the line so that my stitches are actually a quarter of an inch away. You can assembly line sew, or if you're in a hurry like me, you can just do one at a time, but do use your stiletto to make sure those seams don't flip. You are gonna love this, but it's important that your seams don't flip. And this is what it looks like when you wait, open it up. You go, oh my gosh, I've goofed before, but never that much. They're not supposed to match. Now take your ruler, and your cutter and cut on that line that you just made. Now in geese, it's important that the seams are pressed away from the geese. So I'm just gonna fold this patch in half and clip to the stitches. Do it on both halves. And then you open your patch and you press into the goose. On this one, it's the white. Into the goose on one half and then turn it around Hold it up like this and press into the goose on the other half so that when you look on the back side, those seams go in opposite directions. Looking good. And oh, I've got some that I've already pressed. This is what you want it to look like here. You've got two different sets. So now comes that magical geese ruler. You square your patches to one and a half by three inches finished geese for the um, 12 inch block. So I'm gonna line up the uh, red lines on the ruler with the red lines on, the, uh, with the lines on the seams and then just trim across the side, doing good. Now I have a little extra here, a little extra here. I wanna trim that so you just turn it around like this and once again, line up the lines with the seams, trim the right across the top now there are two mirror image pieces and this is where they go. You have the green and the red here and here opposite each other and the all red on opposite sides. To finish the block you need to have two inch squares in the corners and we still need that log cabin patch. Oh, that's easy. It's two inch strips cut into two inch segments, green and red. Press the seam towards the green and then you just assembly line sew that same patch onto a red, cut it there. And when you open it up, ta-da, you've got that center piece. Drop it in there and that finishes that peony. I'm gonna make three just like that and sew the three together with one six and a half inch square. Now don't be like this poor peony maker. She got her diamond sewed together and then she didn't know how to finish those centers. Well, we know how to finish our block. I took my three units, my three peonies, and whenever I was working on them, every time you push the seams away from the flying geese patch, away from the flying geese and then the final seams, both go in towards the middle. So by the time you lay out the three pieces with a six and a half inch square, oh my gosh, every little piece locks together. It's fantastic. Well, I wanna show you how to do those bias stems now. You need to have a piece of fabric, green fabric, nine inches, oh, salvage to salvage is plenty. But take your six by 24 inch ruler and find the 45 degree line on we want to cut a bias first. So take the 45 and line it up right on that salvage edge. You've got a straight, 
straight edge. Just cut off that little corner. Now you can take this, you can get rid of it, or you can just cut that up too. The strip for the curved part of the stem is one inch wide. So I'm just going to line up one inch right along that fresh cut edge, cut one bias strip, and then I need to have a second strip for the straight one, and it is one and a quarter. Let me just line up one and a quarter. Now you need to make one of each of these if you're going for a wall hanging. Wonderful. Now, of the one inch strip, you're going to take it and you're going to fold and press both edges in so that it looks like this. It's actually three parts. That's the one inch and that's the curve. And then the second one, the one and a quarter inch strip, you take and you just press in half, wrong sides together so that it looks like that. Well, those are the two stems. I'm going to just get this out of the way so I can show you the next step. Well, we've got this part right here in the middle and I'm going to take a template that I made to help me with that curved stem. If you just place it right along those seams and hold it down, oh, why not be safe and just use a marker that you can wash out. Just spray and spritz in the end and you'll get rid of these blue lines. But this is the guidelines for my curve. Now, I did some magic here because I want to tuck in the raw edges of these stems. So I did a little unsewing right here with my seam ripper. I went into the seam, unsewed about a half inch there, and then keep on going over. Half inch, that's for the straight stem, and then for the other end of the curve, it's right over here. So let me just sit down and get to work. Okay, take this curved one, this is the one inch one, and you take the end and you just kind of tuck that end in there and like magic it's going to disappear and now all I'm going to do is just grab some long pins and just curve around on that marked line and just see if I can just lay that stem flat and just pin it in place now if you want you can go ahead and you can sew this down by hand but you know Teresa actually sewed this down by machine so when you get back to the other side, then you just tuck it right in that little seam. Well, we are so magical here. We've got one already done. And this is what it looks like here. It's tucked in here. It curves down around and tucks in on the other end. Well, the next stem is a straight stem. Oh, this is going to be a lot easier. We have a little hole right up there, and that's where I'm going to tuck in the end. So I'm just going to go ahead and place it like this so that I can stitch this part by machine. What do you see how fast this goes? Just use your quarter inch foot, start right at the bottom so that you can use the edge of your quarter inch foot and oh, it doesn't matter. You can kind of curve around, whatever. You know, I put the um, straight stem on last so that if you have a little bit of a tuck at the end of that curve, it won't matter because you can cover it up right now. Okay, I'm heading up to that um, part, that little seam that's opened, well, I'm nearly there. And what I want to do is stop right at that point. Oh, I think I'll just put my stiletto there so I can sew right up in there and just stop right there, cut off my threads. And I'll show you how that looks. Perfect! Okay, I just stopped right up here at the top. Now all you do is just press this over and you can also sew this down by hand or by machine. Well, the last step is the leaves, and they are applique leaves. Um, we use fusible interfacing, trace the uh, leave lines on the smooth side of the fusible interfacing, put the fusible side next to the right side of the fabric, and sew on those lines. Well, then all you need to do is just trim and turn these right side out, and there they are. If you would like, you can do a little stitching on the wrong side so that you see that dimension on the right side. Well, they're going to get pressed right in place on this block. Oh, we are so close to being done. Let me press this over, and we'll need to tuck that very top end in, but you'll see. They are mirror image leaves, one half on one side, one in the other. 
little bit of steam, some pressing, and the peony is nearly done. The peony block for Sampler 2 is one big 24 inch square. It's great. Now whenever you make the flying geese patch for Sampler 2, you're going to square this patch up to three and a half inches by six and a half inches. So it ends up be, being three by six geese. Now in my technique, you make four geese at the same time, but you only need to have three sets for the peony. So the best part is you end up with a bonus block. Now you can take those bonus blocks and turn them into some great gifts. Well with the 24 inch bonus block you can make a really cute one block wall hanging. Now all you need to do is just add some side triangles, give it the little stem, rick rack trim, very cute. Well this is for the 24 inch block and this one is from the 12-inch block. It's just a great country pillow, very charming and soft. And I, on this one, I took the block and finished it off with some rickrack trim, buttons on the edges. Very cute. I just love it. Now start with your block, and you need to turn it into a rectangle. Cut a five and a four square on one diagonal, and this part right here is from a seven inch square cut on a diagonal. And then once you sew those triangles on, just square it into a rectangle so that you have room to add your stem and your leaves. Very cute. How about rounding off the bottom and then turning under those raw edges with rickrack. You just put the rickrack along the edge, stitch down through the center of that rickrack, and then you can just turn that raw edge under. So much fun. Well, this one is all set and ready to go. Show you how it's finished. Right here, the raw edge is turned under and just stitched in the ditch with matching thread. Now, this peony is centered on a piece of fabric that is 15 inches in width by 24 and a fourth inches in length. You need to have two of them. You need to have one for the backing as well. So once you have those two pieces cut, Take all four short sides, the 15 inch sides, just turn them over and just stitch right along there. Both sides looking good. Now you want to place them right sides together. And we're going to sew along the long sides. That's 21 and a fourth inches. Now, the first thing you want to do is measure in two inches and put a notch. These are really cheap marks. Two inches and then go in four inches and draw a line. And it's done exactly the same here. Here's that two inch notch and that little four inch line. Take those pieces, let me get them straightened up just a little bit better. They're just not lining up for me. Take and fold on that two inch line and just right sides together, just fold those in there like this and put a pin up here and then down here on the opposite side, same thing and then just smooth them along to the opposite side. Oh, I've got to get this straightened out. And then the same thing, fold on the notch at two inches over to the four inch line and just line that up. You are going to love this finish. It's the cleanest finish you've ever seen on a pillow. Use a quarter inch seam allowance. You can use your quarter inch foot and just stitch right along here. It just goes great. Well, while I do this, I'm going to tell you some of the trivia from the 1930s. Maybe you know. Did you know that in 1931, the Star Spangled Banner became the national anthem? Oh my gosh, in 1936, they opened the very first Bob's Big Boy. That's pretty good, huh? Well, that's good trivia. Okay, I'm going to cut one side, just turn it around and do it. The same thing on the opposite side. Well, in 1938, the minimum wage was just 25 cents an hour. That's not very good, is it? 25 cents. And in 1939, Gone with the Wind premiered in Atlanta, Georgia. You know that famous quote from that movie, Frankly, dear, I don't give a damn, is the number one movie quote. Pretty amazing, huh? 
Well, I'm done on both of those sides, stitched right along there, pull out those pins, and the next thing is to just turn this whole thing right side out, split it apart, and whenever you flip it around, see how you have that nice clean finish right on the edge. And then all you need to do is just stay stitch right along here just to hold those two edges down. Looking great. And just pull that right side out. You're ready to go on. Got one all set. Pretty fast, huh? Great gift. This one, I already did the stitching on so you can see how it looks on the inside. Pressed, clean, finished. And on the opposite side, I sewed three buttons. They could be matching buttons or ladybug in your panties. So cute. You need to have a 14 inch pillow form and just stuff it right in there and stitch down buttons on the opposite side and you'll be done. Well, it doesn't matter where you're from. East, west, if you say peony, peony, or piney, enjoy making your block. Gardening is about connecting with the earth and resetting our clocks to the simple, natural rhythms of life. Well, I feel the same way about quilting. It's just a stress reducer for me. Well, through the years, women have combined gardening with quilting. Well, I purchased this quilt as a top and it is a whole garden of flowers. It's just beautiful and soft pinks and greens with pink solid rectangles. Oh, and take a close look. The white lilies are in different stages of bloom with tight buds and fully opened flowers. Oh, and then they're finished off with a really close blanket stitch of embroidery floss. Just beautiful. Oh, and the iris. They're easy to find, beautiful in purple. Now the quilt maker simulated the yellow veins with little scraps of fabric. Very cute. There's a vibrant red poppy with its feathered leaves, and we can't miss the brilliant yellow tulips. Oh, what a wonderful bit of work. You know, sadly, the quilt maker did not sign her work. And I don't know who the original designer was either, but I'm searching. You know, I sent it out for hand quilting by a group of Amish ladies. The work in the borders is amazing with two different designs. Just take a look at those tiny, perfect stitches. It's beautiful. Well, this quilt is Morning Glory. It was designed in 1933. The solid fabrics are just perfect for this floral arrangement. Take a look at the flowers. Now, the layered applique shapes are simple with just a star cut out of a circle, but you can sure tell it's a Morning Glory. And the leaves are just heart shapes. It's very simple, but elegant. Now, the background fabric is a bit more brown than most of my quilts, but it certainly shows up the quilting. Oh, and unbelievable. It's pattern number 35, put out by the popular batting company, Mountain Mist. Now, they always included a free pattern on the inside of their wrapper. Now, the master company, Stearns & Foster, has been around since 1846. That is a long time. Well, I love the simplicity of these huge dogwood blossoms. Well, the quilter made little French knots around the center, and then she did a tiny, even stem stitch to outline the shapes, and then blanket stitched around the outside edge. Ooh, that lattice is wide and very bold, but the quilting is memorable. She did a really nice design. And then there's crosshatch quilting on the background squares. Just perfect. Well, the Nancy Page Club was always a great source of flower patterns. This is a pattern from the Sunday News Quilt Club. It's really getting worn. Well, now readers wrote in requests to Nancy Page, who was a fictitious quilt teacher. In real life, she was Florence Legankey. Now, Florence always wrote little stories in her weekly column as if the story were real. A reader wrote, I want a flower quilt. 
preferably a rose, one in three shades. I want green leaves and quite a few of them. I do not want alternate blocks of white, nor do I want to use strips between the blocks. The whole quilt top should be covered with a repeating pattern. Can you do that, Nancy? Well, can Nancy do a thing like that? Of course she can. And here is what she did. This is the pattern in a repeat. How nice. Well, what a beautiful collection of quilts from the garden. Just remember to take time to smell the flowers, adjust your disposition, and get back to your quilting.